Nilda grew up here in Chinchero. It's the community of the rainbow. So you'll see so much of the rainbow depicted here. And you're a weaver. You learn from your mother and in the community. And then Nilda had a vision and noticed how the weaving arts were degrading a little bit that some of the ancient ways of producing the beautiful textiles, the patterns, the natural dyes were being lost. So she recognized the arts, visited the communities, became a part of the weaving process, really revitalized weaving in the Sacred Valley and in the Andes itself. I think some of the most important, in my opinion, was the spiritual connection through this textile people and culture. Because we have visitors that come and they say textile as an art, or a few of them. But many of them they will sell as a commercial items. They don't have that connection between people, the spirituality that people has, and the respect to the culture has, the connection with the Mother Earth, that they, everything what comes in this world is very much connected to the Earth. A lot of people come here asking about the iconography meanings, because in many cultures, that's, the, I guess, the most important. For me, I know that part is important, but also for me especially, it's more important to understand the weaver. What means weaving for her? Mm -hmm. Which part of her life is involved in this textile and why she has done those colors, why she has done that shape, the quality, personal stories that come, or communal stories that come behind of certain piece, mm -hmm. okay? Textiles in the Andes made from the fibers of the animals, like wool, alpaca, and llama. Spinning, you know, using the drop spindle, it's the first tool that we, as a weaver, since we are young in many cases, we just ply with and then we start practicing. After 12, 13 years old, you are expected to produce real yarn so mom can use for weavings. So this is an everyday activity, and many times I compare with the, with the meditation. Meditation, you know, you're after you tap die, you pick up your spindle and it's like taking out all the bad spirit that you have. You know, such relaxed activity. My mom is the middle lady, you know. Yes, what they are doing here is they are making two playas from the skin. It's already coming out two threads together. Okay, so that's what they are doing. Two strings together. So that's that. So you will just pick up push as strong as you can and that twists and you control with the, your fingers how fast you like the twist. We need strong yarn. We need little over twisted yarn so we can keep in our back strap loom. Our back strap loom requires strong yarn, over twisted yarn. So that's how it's done. Then you just wind here at the bottom, come to the top, create half edge, you keep in the air again. No, that's how it's done. The plying this, it can be done in the dark spots, in the sloppies. Today, you know, with this globalization world, washing soap operas, world news, always your hands will be doing the plying. This is for, in my opinion, the wealth of the Andean woman. Artistic wealth, um, uh, economical wealth, uh, um, 
you know, uh, this is how you develop your your life, your community, your family, social status, and like that. When they warp, they are side by side. When they are in the loom, upper and lower. Upper threads different colors than the lower threads. Upper threads partners of the lower threads. Upper threads hold it by this string. The lower threads hold it by this kettle here. In this section is the where you make your designs. You hold this, hold, pass, drop, pick up according to the design where you are. That's what she's doing. In this case, she's holding with the left hand all the threads that's not picked up. She's picking up with the right hand. But what she's doing here is looking the designs, watching the design, how it's done. According to that, she's holding certain amount of thread. Come in here from the back, too, because you can see. You know. And what you're saying is the thread that they pass back and forth doesn't show. Yes, doesn't show, and it's that's the weft. Here, the same thing, right hand is picking up, the left hand is just holding the threads that's not picked up. Totally different design from mm. her. And she's looking, it's like drawing in the square piece of paper. With a color pencil, you have your designs in your mind. And what are our designs? Our designs is very much what surround us here in the nature. The shapes, flora, fauna, and community representations. Some of them comes from the long before the Incas. Some of them from the colonial times and like that. That's our traditional designs today here. Warping for a larger piece takes so much time. Mm. Depends on this stage how nice your color combination come in. She is the one who is combining. She is the one who is helping her. You've done quite a bit of experimentation with the colors. Oh, we have done so much. <laughs> <laughs> we have done so much. And this part is like the social part in a way, isn't it? The Very social. Together. You like to do with your best friends, with your mom, with your A lot of times we come out with the textiles that we didn't expect. Yes. Because oh. the concentration, who knows, in our talking. Mm -hmm. Or you start with the wrong thread and... Either you are going to love your loom or either it's going to be okay. Because you will be sitting with these looms, days, weeks, months, depends how the long length. So you have to look, uh, love it, the colors that you are going to look every day. So the, from this stage depends how nice and how intricate your designs you are going to set up. Mm. Mm. She's using this. Yaka family root as a soap, oh. which was before detergent, before the soap. This was the soap. Mm. Okay. Of course, today we have many of those detergents, but also this is a demonstration very good for washing hair too. It's like shampoo with hair conditioner. When mm. you wash without a wool, the dye is very much absorbed nicely. So that's mm. that. So it's like soap, the Andean soap. Dyes. Many of them comes from the lower and the valley, but some of them will come, few of them will come from the upper altitude, like here. This chirca, the leaves will dye this green with a little bit of copper sulfide, yellow, flowers. These flowers will dye yellow, but not just the yellow, will make also orange. Orange will be done with that, like this one, like that one. This lichen moss will make this color. Mm -hmm. This one, the vine that comes from the jungle, will make this our peach color. Mm. Um, 
And there's cochineal, beetle that grows in the prepared cactus. Today, big industry in Peru. We'll make our reds, pinks, purples, orange, many, many shades. Okay? Everything boiled. So more than to we use vinegar, salt, alum, citric acid, lemon, copper sulfide. Boil it and put it there. She had been dyeing green with those leaves and that's the dye what's coming out. Many shades she's doing. Also that one. Mm. You know? And then when she added with the copper sulfide, it will be dark. She's, she had been boiling, she needs to keep boiling. And Nilda's a master at this. She's been working with the colors and designs all her life and with the communities to establish identity, to experiment beyond the boundaries of what's before, but always tracking back to the original intention, multi-use fabrics, natural dyes, designs, as Nelda says, that come from dreams, weaving the dreams, dream weavers is what Nelda says. All these ladies, in community and separately, are weaving the dreams of the ancient ones, of the lineage that have come to life. And they keep experimenting so they're new and fresh and they express what's in their hearts. It's a beautiful process.